Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the TPFFKAL show. This is Freddie Ewan, two-time GM of the year and current Pan Am Cup champion. It is rivalry week. It is also Veterans Day. I want to give a big shout out to our two veterans that are in the group, um, Mr. Brian McCluskey and uh, Mr. Jimmy, uh, Mr. Jimmy V. I just wanted to uh, thank you guys so much. I think, uh, you know, to uh, be in the military at any phase or anything, uh, you need a whole lot of fucking balls. And uh, it's something that I've never had. It's something that I don't think a lot of people have. But, um, you know, just uh, wanted to thank you guys personally for, uh, you know, both looking out for this country, um, protecting us and the freedoms that we have to uh, talk shit and play fantasy football. It's a wonderful thing. Um I got a new, um, I got a new, new uh, logo and everything. I'm going to be on vacation for the next two weeks. I'm visiting Belize um, because I'm probably going to get my ass kicked in the uh, next couple games against the Virginia Sea Dogs. Uh, my team isn't looking good. I made a couple big buys. I uh, got David Montgomery, woohoo, and uh, C.D. Lamb. You know, it seems like Rich is the only one who's smart in selling his team. Danny is uh, still MIA. He's uh, two and seven. He's playing his rival champ this week, which kind of works out. Still needs to um, change his team name. You can do it very easily, Danny. Call me. Um, Hasn't been responding to anyone's texts or phone calls. Doesn't look like uh, he wants to play it out. I guess he doesn't want to end up at Waffle House. Um, Champ has 1% percentage to make the playoffs. I guess, you know, until... You know, I guess it's till like negative percent. He thinks he's still going to be alive. But the Gronk Donks, um, Champ and Danny are going to square off together in rivalry week. It's going to be a really exciting one. Uh, two and 17 versus a three and 16. Um, this was originally supposed to be Doug, but it is Defender. He's going to square off against Zach in rivalry week. Zach has a great team. Lots of points. Four and five currently in seventh place. Chasing really that sixth spot with the most points right now, at least that's what most people are hoping for, is that he's going to take that sixth spot and not go on a run. But it should be an easy week for Zach going up against the vendor who's 1-8. and eight. He got his one win. The vendor sold off some players, should probably sell off a little bit more. Um, we can talk about that. The vendor just give me a call, and I'll explain to you how that all works. Um, FJTK. Going up against Shake and Bake. Uh, this is a big one. This is a big one. It's uh, fourth place for sixth place. A lot on the line here. Um, James is six and three. Bowser is five and four. Um, a win here gets Bowser to six and four. Puts James down to six and four. James gets a win. He goes up to seven and three. Bowser goes up to five and five. So big one right here. Uh, Going to mean a lot for the playoff push. Two guys that went to high school together. The Red Sharks versus Chicken of the Cave. The Red Sharks have pretty much sold everyone off. They're done. Not really giving me much of a rival. Chicken of the Cave playing well currently in third place. Probably going to beat the Red Sharks very easily here. Uh, going up to seven and three should be a good one. And uh, next one, this is, uh, I tried to get these two guys on, but it's just, you know, I don't know, Neil's camera shy and, you know, I don't know, Jimmy's just, uh, I don't know, Jimmy's, just blows in the playoffs. He, you know, Jimmy, you're playing great. Your team's playing great, Jimmy. Great. Uh, you're going to blow into the playoffs like you always do every year. Um, you'll probably get the first seed. And, um, you know, you might win the playoff game, but you'll blow the championship, something like that. But you'll get paid. But, you know, you'll never be a TPFFKL champion like myself. So, you know, enjoy the regular season, my man. So uh, big game here, though. You know, the rock throwers are, uh, they start off hot, won their first four games. They have lost their last five games going up against the Donkey Dicks, who are currently in second place. Believe it or not, Donkey Dicks, a lot of players played last night. Uh, Dante Foreman, 16 points, had a huge game. Um, Jalen Hurts is not playing. Tyreek Hill is not playing, uh, both on bye weeks. But it looks like, uh, and Sam Howell is going to be starting at quarterback for the donkey dicks this week but it looks like it is uh right now it's a favorite to be a blowout 109.83 the donkey dicks are favored over the rock throwers by almost 20 points the rock throwers uh you know looking for something from burrow 
Oh, Nico Collins is out. He's still got to substitute them, so it might not be that much of it. But he's also got, you know, Cooper Cup and Rasheed Rice are on bye weeks. Um, Going to have to replace a um, replace Collins with the wide receiver. Uh, good news for, you know, um, Rock Throws is, you know, they, they do have a decent team. They can get our chain back. Um, Jonathan Taylor could come around and start playing much better. Uh, really looks like he's going to start getting the ball more. So, you know, I think the rock throwers still have a good chance, but they really got to turn it around now. They're in eight points, four and four and five. And then lastly, the rivalry team of destiny taking on the Virginia sea dogs. And let me just talk really quickly about how this rivalry really quite begun. Um, we were drafting, and I, I think the very first draft I think we were doing at Joe's house, I really don't remember. Um, I think I was outside, but really didn't get a chance to meet Brian. I think Brian came in like he was the last minute, like, you know, hey, I'll come join the league and everything. I didn't really get to meet him or anything. Um, didn't really get to talk to him or, or too much or anything. I didn't even – I, I, I'm sorry, but I didn't even remember, re, remember him really. And then um, – and then, you know, the chat started happening. And I guess, you know, people like to, you know, talk shit to me and, you know, make fun of me and whatnot. And, you know, Brian got in on it and just started fucking making fun of me. And so I started ragging back and I was, you know, getting pretty harsh there and beating the shit out of him. And this motherfucker hated me. I mean, he hated me. And we pretty much fucking wanted to kill each other. You know, we didn't even know each other and we wanted to fucking kill each other. And um, it was funny. I get Joe's uh, chili party, which I think it, it might be tomorrow, but uh, Joe's chili party. So Joe's chili party comes and I go over to Joe's chili party. And I think this was like three years ago or two years ago, maybe. And, um, you know, Champ comes up and Champ's like, uh, oh, you got to meet Brian. You got to meet Brian. And uh, brings me up to Brian. Right. And uh, you should have saw the look that Brian gave me. Brian gave me like this death look his wife was right next to him he gave me this death look like this fucking guy and i gave brian this i, I just gave him this big giant fucking hug and um and he's been ever since then you know brian's been one of my one of my best butts um you know which is which is awesome and you know we talk a lot of shit to each other you know it's funny because brian will talk a lot of shit to me and then sometimes he will text me off the thing and he'll be like is it all right that i'm talking all this shit to you and of course it is because you know i talk shit to everybody so um you know it's been a great rivalry and um you know brian has improved his uh, memes tremendously brian made this meme um his first meme the meme uh, where the his week four super bowl where he actually won a game last year and beat me um that was that's the worst fucking meme in the world ho 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 mother i mean that's just so fucking stupid brian so when you beat me this week please come up with a better fucking meme than that one just please come up with a better meme than that one that one is so fucking stupid you know this is great this is great if you can come up with something like this when you beat me this week that is fucking great um, anyway, back to fantasy football. Team of Destiny um, started Bryce Young yesterday. I I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I should have started the guy, you know, the guy up in Minnesota who got, just got traded. But I, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought, you know, something got in my head. I was thinking, like, Brian, like, C.J. Stroud had a good game, had this great game last week. And I'm thinking, like, Bryce Young is going to be like, I'm the number one pick. Playing the Bears, he's going to throw a bunch of touchdowns. But, yeah, Bryce Young got me nine points. So, um I'm pretty much screwed this week, I think. Um, Brian doesn't have any of his team in yet, so I'm still thinking about kidnapping him. But he's got uh, he's got almost his full team in. I got uh, you know Tua on a bye week. Uh, Brian's got you know Diggs going, Lawrence going, Mark Andrews going, CMC Eckler. Uh, you know he picked up Hopkins. You know he's got Puka on a bye week, who hasn't done much lately anyway. Still carrying those two defenses. He's got uh, the Seattle defense and the um, Chargers defense. I guess he's probably going to start the Seattle defense against Washington against me. Um, you know, maybe he'll make a mistake. He'll put in Gardner Minshew. But um, I'm going to need a lot of help. Uh, you know, I just got uh, Montgomery, and hopefully I can get Montgomery to score some things. I, I'm going to need a lot of help, though. I'm going to need uh, – I got some good matchups with uh, C.D. Lamb up against the Giants. Um you know, Garrett Wilson, Devontae Adams going up against e each other. But, you know, I'm going to need a lot of help to win this one. 
Uh, we also play next week, so I'm hoping to get one out of two of these. Uh, TOD's got a tough schedule ahead. So uh, TOD's playoff chances, I think, was something like 70%, 77% two weeks ago. I lost my last two games, though, and uh, looking like I may be in trouble in this one. So it's going to be an interesting finish. It looks like there are eight teams right now with a legitimate shot of winning the Pantheon Cup. Um there are eight teams. There are four that are definitely out. Champ, you are one of them. Start selling your team. Um, you know, and Champ's only used $5 of his budget money. And uh, Danny has used none. Congratulations, Danny. Maybe that's why you're doing so great in fantasy football. You used zero of your waiver budget money. Sea uh, Dogs and TOD have both used everything. So, um, I don't know. Maybe that's it. If anyone needs a tip on uh, what waiver budget money is, I can do a whole show on that, and uh, it'll be fun. So really easy, guys. Uh, use your waiver budget. Get guys off the bench, off the waiver wire, and and play them because you can find some good players sometimes because injuries happen in football. That That's all in my books. So obviously a couple guys haven't been ringing this, and that's you know why they're 1% or less. Um, so we got eight teams. Uh, with a legitimate shot, you know, uh, rock throwers are falling quickly, um, but they can get back in there. They TOD is uh, in a little bit of trouble. You got to remember that the top five spots go to the back records and the sixth spot goes to the team with the most points. Zach is uh, killing it at the bottom with the points. So it looks like it's really going to be a battle between um, me and Bowser, who's going to get that last spot unless the rock throwers uh, start coming around and, and playing some more. But really the top four teams, the Sea Dogs, the Donkey Dicks, COC, and FJTK, I think they're all over 90% to make the playoffs. I think those are four locks. Um, I really think Zach's going to get in with the points, and that really leaves just one playoff spot left which is really just going to be between TOD and Shake and Bake. Uh, they do play each other. I think me and Bowser do play each other again. I think it's the next to last game of the regular season, which should be a big one. But, uh, yeah, we got some big things coming. Trade deadline's approaching. i um, telling you guys, you know, a lot of people are going out there and buying. Sell your team. Sell your team now. Who cares about going to the Waffle House? Sell your guys. Pack up for next year. The guys who packed up for next year – uh, Brian, who's in first place, seven and two. James, who's in fourth place in six and three. And Zach, who's in seventh place in four and five, but he's got a ton of points. So those guys are all probably going to make the playoffs. So you guys want to make the playoffs next year, sell your team now. Get as much as you can because you're going to get less offerings and left offerings as the weeks go on. Sell your team now. If you don't know how to do that, read my book. It's in the chapter. But anyway. I hope you had a great show. It is Friday night. Everyone enjoyed the games on Sunday. Maybe we can get Jimmy and Neil on, hopefully, and talk a little bit of rivalry. Maybe we can get Brian on tomorrow. Who the fuck knows? Have a great night, everybody. And once again, this is Freddie Ewan, two-time GM of the year, current Pantheon Cup champion, host of the TPFFKAL show. I love you guys. Have a great night. Bye-bye.